Did you find what you wanted? Is that the good stuff? Should we see if Kaina wants some? Hey guys, this is the uh, frost cloth that I like to use. If you're local to my area, it's at Sunnyside Gardens. This is the only place I've seen that really has it at a reasonable price. I bought a lot of it when I buy it. And um, I'm also here today to get some peat moss. And I'm seeing that my days of using peat moss as my planting medium are limited because it went from $12 for three cubic feet to $26 for three cubic feet. So I need to open up my other hotbeds and use that as my planting medium as much as I possibly can. It's not a bad thing because it's pushing me to up my game. But um, this stuff is really worth having. It lasts forever as long as you don't leave it down for your dog to chew on it. So I need to get some of this while I'm here. All right, we have four bales of peat moss, two bags of perlite, a gallon of vermiculite, and a whole bunch of row cover. Feels good to have it. Doesn't feel good to pay for it. It was double the price that it would have been last year for the same amount. So if you have a place that's cheap for your supplies like this, it might be a good idea to stock up. Girls have been patient today. Giving mom lots of back rubs. <laughs> As mom stresses out. Thank you to all my patrons. You are who paid for the peat moss. Not all of it. I made $124 on Patreon this month. So um, that paid for half of this. And then the other half of this was paid for by my Etsy store, by people buying my uh, my ebook. So thank you for everybody who supported the channel, either buying the ebook or being on Patreon with me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. So this whole car full of stuff came from your guys and your generosity. So thanks a lot. Okay guys, for this part, you do need a mask. It's not to keep a virus out, it's to keep dust and perlite out of your lungs. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, peat moss up first and break up the clods. That's where it is. And then I will add the perlite and the vermiculite and mix that in. And then I'll get some fertilizer pellets. I don't have enough rabbit manure to put rabbit manure right under the soil, so I'm gonna have to add a little bit of uh, pellets. So once I have the potting soil actually mixed, I can't let the chickens be in here anymore. So that's why I set up the other greenhouse for the chickens and the geese to go into and stay warm. It was because the chickens will definitely climb up on this and scratch it right out of the bed. Hey guys, I'm about to go out to the greenhouse and get the planting put in. I have tot soy and, and pak choy here. They are really good Asian greens. They're our favorite Asian green. I also have some lettuce here. I'm not doing any root vegetables in the hotbed this time. I didn't have enough rabbit manure. I had to replace the rabbit manure with goat manure. I'm just not as confident in the goat manure as I am with the rabbit manure. So instead of root vegetables, we're going to do greens that you cook and then I've also got some sugar snap peas that I'm soaking that I'm going to put in so I'm going to get them planted today. I'm not going to get them covered today because they don't need covering yet but I'll probably put the covering on them tomorrow because I need to put hoops in. <laughs> I 
hope you guys can see the steam. I just rested my elbows in the soil and it is warm to the touch, which means if normal human temperature is 97 degrees, this bed is warm to the touch, which means that it's warmer than 97 degrees. I hope you can see that. Can you see it? Trying really hard to hold still and I'm not very good at it. Okay, so hopefully you guys saw that. I'm very warm on my elbows from resting in the bed. So these are the hoops that I use. They were the only ones I could pry up because the others are absolutely frozen. So I guess I'll show you. We still have snow. It's very warm in here. But that's what it looks like outside. Honey, the gate is broken. You got to fix it. Otherwise, the goat will get out. You've got to fix it. Okay, so I need to get the ducks out. Because I want to shut the gate, the door. And the door is getting broken from all the ice. Doesn't want to close. Okay, Goose, you have to move. See that? It's, it's just frozen. Gotta find, gotta find a shovel. Even though I'm planting, and it's warm in the greenhouse. Yeah, I know they do, but they can't be in here tonight. The fox will get them. So I've got to have them get out. Yeah, I know. He wants to be helpful. Yeah, I know. Okay, so i got to chip this away. Graham, go away. She doesn't like you. Okay, what I did to keep the chickens off was... The chickens were using these bales of peat moss to hop up onto the corner of the hotbed and and I didn't want them on it. So I put this uh, duck cage that's usually on the ground onto this end so that when the chickens tried to jump there, there wasn't anywhere to land. So they have stayed off just fine. And I'm just going to broadcast seed everything. And then I will put the covers on tomorrow. All right. So it's a mix of vermiculite, perlite, and peat moss. I still need to add fertilizer beads to it. I still need to add my soaker hoses to it. But this is what it looks like. If, if you go to my Etsy store and get the plans, I don't really, I give kind of ratios, but I don't give exact recipes because I make so much of it. it I just mix it till it looks right. I want it to be heavy on the perlite. This is better than this. You can see this has quite a bit more perlite. And then I want a little bit of vermiculite. Vermiculite holds moisture in. I don't know if you can see the steam as I, as I wiggle this. I'm going to water it again with rabbit manure tea when I seed it. And then I'll continue to water with rabbit manure tea until I see emergence. Once I see the seedlings coming up, I will stop watering with rabbit manure tea. After that, I will use clean well water to water everything. And it is, this is a good five degrees warmer than my hand. This is frozen perlite that I couldn't get to break up. It's warm now, so I can mix it in. You don't want to go too heavy on the perlite. Or it, um, so this is too much perlite. See that? Too much perlite. Um, 
If you put too much perlite in, then you end up with water that doesn't stay at the roots of the plants and everything dries out. So, we're just about done. I need to open that door so they can get out. This is not a fox proof greenhouse, so they can't see in here at night. And with the hot bed going, it'll gas them out if the bed were to heat up again really strongly. So I'm gonna see if I can get everybody out. I have the other greenhouse with food and water in it. And then this guy is not to be convinced that he doesn't just need to stay with you. Okay, guys. Oh, we didn't lose our other chicken. She came back. Good. Yeah, are you coming out? Come on out. Come on out. There we go. So they you can imagine the havoc that the chickens could cause once I have this all ready to go. Um, they could scratch all the dirt out. They could scratch all the seeds out. What's happening is we're getting little teeny tiny bugs that are warming up in the um, peat moss and everything. I mean, there's insect eggs in everything, right? There's no such thing as completely sanitary anything. So when the when the peat moss starts to warm up, the little bugs in the peat moss, like they're almost not visible. They're little mites and little soil bugs and everything. And but the chickens can see them, and so the chickens want to come up and go through all of my beautiful potting soil and eat the little bugs so you see how this one is a little light on the perlite so I'm just kind of shifting some of the perlite heavy spots into a spot that see how heavy that is in perlite I'm shifting that over here I know it feels so nice on my hands it's like a spa treatment it's so nice and warm um, so I'm just getting in there Working the perlite in a little better. Giving myself a spa treatment with warm soil. What I should do is just go get all my plants that are in the house and get them planted. Because it's so nice and warm. They would be just fine out here as long as I covered them. So I've got onions and basil in the house. And I should just go get them and put a milk jug over them. I've got milk jugs out in the goat shed and I should just get them planted because they would love this heat. Okay. And I want to make sure that it's not mounded. It needs to be flat. So this looks about right. That's a little too much perlite. I need to mix that in. Can you see the steam now? Please tell me you can see the steam. I can't see the steam with my naked eye through the camera. Maybe you can't see it. Darn it. So the trick is your bed has to be big enough and you have to have enough nitrogen in there and it has to be watered. It can't be dry. Uh, the compost will never heat up if it's dry. Can you see it now? I can see it with my naked eye, but I can't see it through the camera. Can you guys see it through the camera? So. That is the trick though. If I bring a plant that's alive out here, seeds will be fine. Seeds, it'll help them germinate to have a little bit of a freeze thaw cycle. But if I bring out my live plants, my, my plants that have already been started, 
it'll kill him to be out here without a cover on. Can you see it now? Hopefully you can see it. I can't see it through the camera. Okay. So, I might need to get a kiddo to help me. Because I'm not feeling very motivated. And I need to dump this out because I think... One thing is, this won't work. This would not work over the top of plants. The reason is there's no venting. If there's no venting, what'll happen is it'll cook the plants. The warmth from the bed will actually heat up and cook the plants if there's no vent. So you have to have something that breathes, that holds the heat in, but lets the, the moisture out a little bit. So... I know it's handy cam guys, I'm really sorry. We're gonna put this guy in here. I think this was 10 gauge wire, eight gauge wire, it's very thick and very expensive. I think a roll of it was like $50. My last roll lasted for like 10 years, but finally gave up the ghost. Um, for living plants, I actually wanna put it in pretty deep because I want the cloth to be as close to the planting medium as possible um, so that you're retaining the heat close to the plants. The fun thing is, is that these um, hoops go in pretty deep and when I pull them out next time, it's almost gonna be too hot for my hand to touch because it's a lot warmer on the inside of the bed than it is here on just the first foot. So that one I bent a little bit, see? I'm trying to get it out of the snow. So I didn't want to come out and do this today. I had other things on my project list, but I'm running out of February. I could have planted this two weeks ago it was heating up for me then, but I, I was worried about getting it heated up and needing to... Oh, there's some more. Can you see it? Um, I was worried about heating it up too much and needing to still have the birds in here. It's a lot warmer than it was two weeks ago. So, there's four of them for you guys to see. I do already have the, um, ooh, here it smells very strongly of <laughs> compost. It smells very living, almost like vapor rub, camphor. It doesn't stink. It doesn't smell like methane or ammonia or anything like that. It smells kind of piney. Very warm. And I need to water it to keep the heat going. Remember, if you let your compost dry out, it just stops heating up. It doesn't mean it needs to be waterlogged. It just needs to be... Um, moist. All right. So I kind of like how that looks. That looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. I might want to put a little bit more vermiculite in it. Um, and one thing I want you guys to remember is you can do this. This is my tough greenhouse. This is my expensive greenhouse. My little... Cow panel greenhouse will do exactly the same thing, uh, but for a lot cheaper. This this greenhouse was like $3,500, and I had to pay for it with a Kickstarter because I couldn't afford to just pay for it, so I, I knit a lot of sweaters to pay for this greenhouse, but the other one I built for like maybe a couple hundred dollars, and the rabbits are currently filling it up. See how nice it looks? It looks so nice. So, 
Um, I just broadcast. For these early winter uh, beds, you want it really, really, really tightly packed. So tightly packed. Kind of like microgreens. Um, to all intents and purposes, what I'm harvesting here is going to be microgreens. So I'm going to use the tox, uh, tot soy, the pok choy, and what was the other one I got? I got peas. Can't remember what the last one was. But those are what I'm going to plant right now because they're cut and come again to some degree. Um, and then <clears throat> come the middle of March, I can plant my outside hotbeds and just put covers on them. So this is just... This is just the first planting. All right, these are lettuce seeds that I saved from last year. Usually what I do for my first hotbed planting of the year is use my oldest seeds so that there's no real waste and if they don't come up it doesn't really matter. Uh, this year I don't have any extra, any bad seeds. I used them all up yes last year and so um, I'm just going to water this in and then I'm going to plant the peas. Again, I'm using rabbit manure tea that's been sitting for about a week and a half, two weeks now. Once the seeds come up, you always want to wait until the sunshine in the greenhouse has warmed the water up. You don't want to use it cold because it'll shock the plants. doesn't matter right now because I don't have um, any plants coming up. So I can water, but it is best not to use really really cold water at any time because it can also shock the hotbed and make it cool off. Graham? Uh, 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 uh. As soon as I possibly can I need to get my soaker hoses on this because the spray of a hose of a watering can will actually disturb the seedlings so that they don't root and grow correctly. So instead you want to use something that doesn't have air water droplets, instead I use soaker hoses. Always make sure to put your lid back on your watering container. I've had quail and kittens fall into water before. Make sure to put your cover back on. It doesn't really work to use a rosette on the end of your watering because when you're doing rabbit manure tea, there's always going to be little bits of hay or little bits of straw or little bits of rabbit poop that are still in it and they won't let the rosettes flow clearly. So I just take the rosette off. Okay, it's currently 26 degrees, feels like 16 degrees outside. In here it feels like it's about 68 degrees. And you can see it's not bright and sunny anymore. The warmth is coming from the hotbed. If you guys like these videos and these experiments, make sure to go over and support me on Patreon. It allows me to make improvements on the project. If you're interested in the plans themselves, they are over on my Etsy store. And I think they're like $7.99 and $9.99. I'm still working on them, so I'm not really charging a huge amount for them. But you can get a pretty good idea of how I do it. If your bed isn't big enough, it won't heat up. If you don't water the bed, it won't heat up. And so uh, this is a really good size of bed. And it feeds our family really, really well. Thanks for tuning in and I will try to keep you posted as we move forward on the hotbed. All right, this compost, this dirt slash compost has been composting for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years. Just sitting there. Hasn't ever been turned. And that's what we're getting. Are you sure it's been that long? Yeah, it's been that long. It's been since we moved here. 
because I put I put these in like the second or third year that we were here. Uh-uh. We did that one on the end. The one in the in the greenhouse we did in 2019. The nice thing about the swimming pools is it doesn't matter if you puncture them. Once they have their first hole in them, they're not useful for the ducks anymore. So at this point, if they get cracks in them, they're just here to hold the dirt in. Um, if you don't get enough rabbit manure in your bed, your carbon won't break down. So make sure you get enough rabbit manure in the bed. Okay, I need hay for the sheep. I wanted to show you guys that the middle of this bed is full of branches like big wood. If you want a lot of compost really quick, you don't put anything like this in. If you want the, the hotbed to stay high for a really long time and take a very long time to break down, you put in big pieces of wood. Um, that's what we have about a foot down. We're getting more sawdust. There's still quite a bit of compost and dirt here in the top that I can harvest, but I have hit in that one spot, I hit a lot of sawdust. And to me, that just means I need to put the rabbit cages on and let all that sawdust break down underneath the rabbit cages. <laughs> All right, this gray mama, her babies are weaned. They are coming up on six weeks, so we're going to move babies out of here and put them in their own cage and rebreed mama. We have the feed sacks and blankets on the cages, that way it keeps the wind and the rain off. And lately we've had to start tying the cages too. That way it doesn't actually push the cages off using the um, feed sacks as a parachute. From what? The wind. Oh, so do you want to start that over again and tell them about the wind? Now that we have a noun? <laughs> um, we have to keep on tying the rabbit coops to the hotbeds. That way the wind doesn't push them off. Have we ever had it push them off? No. No. But we get some very big gusty 50, 60 mile an hour winds here. And even though it's protected, this is a protected space because of the wind breaks, we get enough gusts that we're concerned that it might happen. Yeah. 
All right, let's go ahead and transition some gray bunnies. Actually, we need to get them some water and some hay and set up their cages, and then we want to transition them. Yeah. All right, let's get them some food. All right, this is what it looks like before we put them in. Here's their water. We have it soaking right now because it had some paper that stuck to it that I wanted to get off. They, we like to give them a little piece of cardboard in here to stand on. Speaking of which, Kai, you want to go find a clean box? See that? They had a little, the cardboard we usually put in there for them. They had managed to get it in their water. So we're going to rinse that one more time. I like these because they have the little thingamadauber there that attaches it to the bottom of the cage. They can get it to go. There we go. You just lock it into place. And it keeps them from knocking it over. We use these instead of water bottles because in the winter water bottles freeze and break and the rabbits would die of dehydration. Um, in the summer this one is nice. It's hard plastic. I don't I prefer the metal ones. I'll show you one of those in a minute in a minute. The metal ones are great because they don't break in the winter. Um but this, you can see that there's water, you know that there's water, you know that it's functioning. So that's what I use. This is just a little plastic basket from the Dollar Tree. This is what their hay goes in, and that's what most of their food is. It's just hay. It's an alfalfa um, grass hay mix. And then we also give them pellets. And then we give them sunflower seeds and organic wheat. And that's what they eat, along with tree cuttings and that kind of thing. Um, this is not a hostile hair cage. This is a cage that I made a long time ago with wire I got from True Value. And I've had to repair it and repair it and repair it. You can see I use hog rings for the door hinge. And I have more of these square grids coming. I love them. They are eternally useful on a homestead, and so I'll show you how to how to put stuff like this together later. But um, I can only put rabbits in these that are more mature, otherwise they'll squeeze through the wire. And if you live in a place that has predators like snakes and rats, this would not be an ideal cage. My favorite cages are hostile hair cages, and I do have the link in the description. They're one of my few affiliates. And um, I have three of their cages now. Um, I had four. And one of the one of the four I sold because I, I sent the quail with their cage. But um, this is what my crappy cages that I built years ago look like, and you can see just how many times I've had to repair them. I think these ones have been handled a lot more than usual. Yeah, are they very calm? Well, but their mama is very calm. That's all of them. We're good. Hi, baby. All right. When we wean babies, we leave two in with mama because we want to make sure that she's not getting mastitis. So we've left two with her. So here's this mama. She's our older doe now. These are her babies. She had 15 and kept 12. She's a fantastic mom. Um, her first time she had a baby, she had 18 and kept 14 or 12 or something. Might have even been 15. Yeah, it was a lot. So I came into Lowe's because my favorite store to get containers at Target isn't open till 8 and I only have the card for another few minutes. So I need to get a bale of peat moss, um, perlite, sand, and some compost. And um, I'm going to need a card. Bale of 
but you want to make sure that you're not getting clear. If you get clear, it acts like a greenhouse and it'll cook your plants, it'll cook their roots. They, it needs to be dark. What I could do is show you guys how to do this just in a bucket. Okay, so that was 48. Let's see if I can flip it so you guys can see. All right, so it was 48.81, and I should be able to make quite a few boxes with this. And the other cool thing was they gave me this coupon. They gave me this coupon so that next time I come in and spend 50 bucks, I get $10 off, which I'll take that. I'm in here at Lowe's all the time. The only thing is I forgot to pick up my drill from and my saw. So it's a good thing I have my hand tools at the house. I'm, I'm not sure how much of it I'll be able to get done today. Um, but I've done it before with fewer tools, so I should be able to have at least one for you to see, even if it's just the cardboard box version. Hey guys, so before I show you how to do the self-watering container, I want to show you how to plant into cardboard boxes for real. The reason is sometimes, at least, well, it's pretty much all the time for me, I don't like to spend money on Rubbermaids just to punch holes in them. It drives me crazy. So instead, if I put everything into cardboard boxes, I can put the cardboard boxes out, I can water them. As they start to fall apart, I just pick them up and put them into a new cardboard box. As long as you have um, enough structural integrity at the bottom that you can lift it to put it in the new box. If you don't, you just get a pitchfork, lift it up, put it into the new box. It, it, it harms the roots less than it does if you're actually transplanting them. And I have been doing this for as long as I've been gardening, I've been doing this. Uh, another option, uh, I have made self-watering containers before, but I did it with frosting buckets from the local uh, bakery. I can't get them here. I've asked everywhere I can find and they, they don't like to hand them out very much. I like to have a box that has some depth to it, you know, at least six inches. And um, the reason is, is that I want the roots to get really nice and deep in the box before I plant it. And I love to do this with perennials because that cardboard layer on all sides gives them a huge advantage over the local weeds. It doesn't let the weeds get in with the perennial and it, it allows you to mulch around it so that it can take over and become uh, abundant rather than having to fight weeds and it allows you to know where to water so that it stays just around the roots. So, favorite thing. You saw me just mix this. It is um, peat moss and some humates and 
perlite. I would like to put sand into this. My friend Michael, who is really, really a huge source of information for the Mint Lighter Garden um, method, he recommends that I put sand into it. And I did last spring when we used our Air Creek garden, the, the, the garden bed itself was made out of Air Creek. I did use sand in that because I had access to uh, uh, strong people to help me with the sand but this time around I had to get it myself and the sand was just too heavy so on the next batch when I go in I will get sand but um, at this point I'm just trying to get something in the ground um, are both of you finished yeah okay finished before Kaya. this one is a borage and it's very sad it's had some ups and downs and it did not find them helpful I do not know if it will make it or not. So I'm going to dig down. And really, I treat. Oh, that's why. Okay. So these peat cups are nice and everything. But the plants have a hard time getting their roots outside of them. So I'm going to dig this down. Put it in. And then I'm actually going to build this up a bit to give it some physical strength. And I don't know if this one is really going to come back. This one's had a rough go. The other one here is a, I think, a celery and a comfrey mix. This is a Russian balking. In the tray. No, our other ones are big ones. Um, what do you mean? The big ones that were in the bucket. Oh, they're still in the bucket. We're not taking those out. I can see the that uh, one's roots from the bottom. Can you okay. get this ant for uh -huh. me? Honey, it's not in trouble. I just need you to get off me. All right. And I plant these pretty thickly, especially with my perennials. Can you cut and use this box? Nope. Go finish and read, and I will tell you when it is your turn. And it's going to be sad for a couple days because it will have a little bit of transplant shock. Hence why I like to do the cardboard is because you don't get any transplant shock because you're not actually disturbing the roots. You're just putting it in a new box. And this one smells really good. This one is sage. Are you overplanting it? Outside, and then I'm going to have you water them for me. Okay. Mom, I want to do that right now because they might clip them. All right, so you water those just the same as you'd water anything else. Don't overwater it. The water will just run out the bottom. So uh, water the roots. Don't water the leaves. And our last frost date is today, April 15th, which means that we can really just put anything out at this point. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we'll probably start some more seedlings. Ugh, hope you enjoy that. Our seeds that we are affiliated with are MI Gardener and also Mary's Heirloom Seeds, so go check those out. And I will put links in the description through Amazon affiliates also for some of the gardening supplies that I use. And thanks for watching. And uh, we'll try and get a little montage of us putting them out and getting them water later. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.
Okay, so I have moved all my cool weather plants here underneath the swing set. My kids don't play in this area. So I dug away all the mulch so that they're in contact with bare soil. I dumped three buckets of really, really strong rabbit manure tea on the dirt, put the boxes in, pushed the mulch up back around them. I have a, a frost cloth on the back ready to be put on at any minute. And this is not a, like my kids can still swing. This won't be in their way. And I think it'll be a fun place to harvest um, strawberries and peas from anyway. So um, I'm going to put up a little, a little gate right here too so that if they fall off the swing they're not falling in here. And I've done this in three other places with perennials. And we'll see how it goes because the regular part of the garden is just too hot and um, it's starting to be time to plant my regular annuals and so the perennials need to go where they're going to go permanently and it is just too warm over there. So I love these cardboard boxes because I can move my garden as the needs of my plants become evident without having to transplant them and have transplant shock and stuff like that. It allows me to move them and still biodegrade and keep the moisture in and we'll see how this works.